the Data Challenge Awards. My name is Elliot Greenberger. I'm General Manager of Divi. And frankly, this is a really exciting night for us. It's the first time that we've ever done an event like this. Um, and it's a great chance to celebrate the civic data community, to recognize people who ride Divi. Let's recognize who's a member. Good number of you. All right. That's good. Who has never ridden Divi before? Don't worry. All right. Some of the finalists haven't ridden Divi, but they know the game. <laughs> Um, so before we get to the awards, we want to share some exciting news. Um, this week, we've actually begun our expansion, our first major expansion. Uh, we're currently at 300 stations, but we'll be to 476 stations. And in order, uh, the person who will talk more about how the expansion is Sean Whitehill. He's an assistant commissioner of the Chicago Department of Transportation, and he's going to share more details about our big expansion. Thanks, Elliot. First slide. As Elliot said, I kind of stole my thunder. We like to do things subtly here, so you may not have heard anything about the expansion. Actually, you probably haven't heard anything about the expansion. But we are doing an expansion. It started yesterday. We're pretty excited about it. We haven't been able to tell people about it yet, but hopefully we'll get to that eventually. But 476 stations will actually be the largest bike share system in North America based on the number of stations. So we're pretty excited. So you can kind of see there's maps, um, a couple different maps. Uh, the one on um, your left is the Divi expansion map, and that just kind of shows you what the uh, system looks like now. So the light blue, which you can kind of see, is our current service area. The pink is our uh, service area when we're done with this expansion this year. Um, and then on the other side, one of the things we decided to do is we actually use data and look at things like all of you did for this contest to kind of figure out how to better install the station. So last time we installed when we launched, we did kind of a hopscotch all over the place pattern. It was not, it was actually a, because of the way we're getting the stations approved as we're installing them that made it more difficult. All the stations that we're installing over the next uh, month and a half have been approved. They're all ready to go. And so what we're doing is we're actually grouping them by what we call neighborhood areas. So that in those areas, like for example, you can see Bronzeville, Maryville, South Shore, those stations will all be installed within about a week of each other. And people who live in those neighborhoods will have an instant network, places to ride to and from. So we're pretty excited about that. So we're going to be done by June. We've got 176 stations, 1,760 bikes. Um, and we can't wait. I'm going to have one kind of near my house. I can't wait to live in the service area again. I moved out of it last year, and I'm excited to be in there again. Um, 87 square miles, and about 38% of the land area. So right now, we serve about 19% of the geographic area of the city of Chicago. We're actually doubling our footprint. So we'll serve well, uh, nearly 40% of the city of Chicago. Next one. And we're actually going to serve a lot more people. So right now we serve about 800,000 people, about 33% of the population of the city. We're actually going to go be serving about half the population of the city, over actually 56% of the population. Again, excited to bring the service to more people. And finally, no slide? Okay. That's it. So we're going to be 50 total. No, the 50 total. And we're incredibly, incredibly excited about it. Um, we are, you know, it, this has been, we've been planning the expansion now forever, it seems like. Um, this was supposed to happen last spring, and then our bank, our uh, equipment provider, not our operator, but our equipment provider, not Motivate, uh, went bankrupt on us. And so we couldn't get equipment, we had to delay. But now, finally here, everything's in the city, and we're ready to go. Back to it. All right, let's get started. So if you're tweeting tonight's ceremony, you can feel free to use the hashtag Divi Data. Also, this is a ceremony, but you can also get up anytime you want. There's beer in the back on that side. There's more pizza here. So feel free to take a break um, and enjoy that. So for the Divi Data Challenge, we released over 3.2 million trips that occurred during 2013 and 2014. It's the first time that we've released a whole year's worth of data and it was a lot for our entrants to play with. So we provided 3.2 million anonymized trips and that included a bunch of different data points. We shared the start time and start station, the end time and the end station, 
And then some of the details about who rode that trip. So whether they were an annual member or whether they were a 24-hour pass user. And if they were a member, we indicated whether this person was male or female and their year of birth. So we released this to the public earlier this year and gave them about a month to create something great, which was really anything that they wanted to create. We received nearly 40 excellent entries, and our team at Divi narrowed these down to the top of three entries in four categories. Most beautiful, most creative, most insightful, and most comprehensive. We then posted the finalists on RedEyeChicago.com, where the public could vote on their favorite entries. Tonight, we'll announce those winners. So all the finalists, or many of them are here in the front row, um, all finalists were, were will receive a Divi package that includes two Divi memberships, and the winners will also receive a package from Microsoft that includes an Xbox One, Xbox Connect, Windows Phone, and a BizSpark software package, as well as a full-page ad in Red Eye. So, before we get to the first category, uh, I just want to take a moment to thank some of our partners for this first Divi Data Challenge. First of all, a big thank you to Red Eye. Thank you for hosting the voting portion of the contest and for being our media partner to get the word out. Thank you also to Microsoft for donating prizes for the winning entries and for supporting civic, civic engagement and data in the city of Chicago. A very important thank you to the team here at 1871 who made this space available for us and for supporting technology and innovation within and beyond these walls. And finally, of course, thank you to Goose Island for donating tonight's beer and for being a big supporter of the city and Viking, the Viking community in general. So have a round of applause for all of the All right, so we'll be highlighting the three finalists in each category and then announcing the winner in each. So if you're announced as the winner, uh, please come up so we can recognize you and feel free to say something about your entry. Remember, we'll be announcing the best overall visual visualization at the end of the night which was selected by the Divi team. So if you don't win in your category, there's still a chance to win the overall prize. And I'll also just say, you know, everyone is a winner in our book, <laughs> of course. And when we started this contest, uh, we were sort of questioning whether, you know, how we should do it. And what we realized is that a lot of the people who were going to enter would probably have created what they created anyway, um, because people are so passionate about data, because they're so passionate about the city and passion about open data. Um, so really, this is just sort of the icing on the cake for us. So to get started, uh, presenting the first category, most beautiful, will be Amanda Woodall, Program Director at the Chicago Department of Transportation. Thank you, everybody. The most beautiful category recognizes the entry that is the most visually appealing in its illustrations. In the case of these particular finalists, uh, these were all animations, which showed trips moving throughout space and time. The first finalist is Matthew Shaxta, who created a 3D visualization of 2014 Divi trip, uh, Divi trip data using curves to show hourly trips between stations and a chord diagram to show daily flows between neighborhoods. Matthew is a civil engineer by training that ventured into the territory of data visualization simulation and computational thinking. He has a passion for the built environment and is currently a computational designer in the city design practice of the architectural, uh, sorry, of the architecture engineering firm Skidmore, Owings and Merrill. The second, the second finalist is Michael Freeman who created a moving map that allows you to visualize Divi trips and lets you control the map to explore different visualizations. Michael is a lecturer at the Information School at the University of Washington. Previously, he worked as a data visualization specialist at the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation. The third finalist entry comes from Mike Joyce and Patrick Carolyn who together created a moving model of all, Divi data, uh, of all Divi trips made in 2014. Mike is a recovering Southern Californian <laughs> and a budding data scientist. Patrick is a data scientist currently at Huron Consulting. He's lived in Chicago since 2004, where he's worked in various startups and consulting firms specializing in data engineering, visualization, 
and analysis. Now, big round of applause for all the finalists. And the winner is Michael Freeman. Unfortunately, Michael can't be here tonight, but we will let him know that he's won and he will be receiving his prize shortly. All right, I'd also like to mention that the finalists and the winners will be posted at digitbikes.com slash data challenge uh, later this week. So if you'd like to see some of these act, uh, entries in action, which I recommend, you know, the screenshots are great, but especially the animations uh, really come to life when you get to see it yourself. So uh, visit our website and check those out. Uh, moving on, presenting the most creative category is Kristen Samuelson, Managing Editor at Red Eye. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for just taking part in this as one of the sponsors here. We are so excited. A lot of people know Red Eye by the big red boxes that you see on the street, but uh, we also have a website, redeyechicago.com, and because of you guys, you're making that a bigger and better thing. So thank you for that. Uh, the most creative category recognizes the entries that visualize the data in the most new, different, and innovative ways. Each of these entries offered an original perspective on an approach toward the data. The first finalist is Sean Owecki. He builds an application that allows you to select a specific or random individual bike and visualize its journey through 2014 using Google Maps. Sean recently made a career change to software development and was a graduate of Dev Bootcamp Chicago. Round of applause for Sean. <laughs> the second finalists are Dan Platt and Craig Booth, who created an application that was built using Quill, an artificial intelligence platform developed in Chicago, to write data-driven stories about Divi in plain English. Dan is a product specialist at Chicago-based Narrative Science and came to, came to the company after receiving a master's in journalism at Northwestern University while focusing on ways to combine storytelling and technology. Craig is a scientist and an engineer who also works at Narrative Science, running data into, or turning data into stories. He is an avid sports fan and built StansNinja.io to allow other sports lovers to analyze their own sports statistics. Big round of applause for those guys. And the third finalist is Tom Hogan, who built a riff on the traveling salesman problem, trying to visit all stations in as few miles as possible. Tom is a Chicago-based data consultant, consultant and enthusiastic Divi writer, starting a lot of rides at station number 219. Some people may know that station as being in Portland. Some of the contestants may know it as 41.916027, negative 87.6774411. That's the latitude and longitude of that station for the uninitiated. Tom enjoyed the opportunity to learn uh, some D3 and leaflet visualizations for this project. So, uh, a big round of applause for all the finalists. Before, before I read off the, uh, the, the 
the finalists and the winners, I want to say that I can't even begin to tell you how thrilled I am that Microsoft is able to be part of this competition, partially because it highlights that this open data movement isn't just about boring government data. It's about the creativity and insight that you can unleash when you open up all kinds of data. And um, you know, I, I looked at all of the entrants. I was absolutely inspired by what you've been able to do with this data. And I also want to take one second to thank Divi and the city for their foresight and their commitments. The idea of providing us with uh, this data to showcase that creativity, not to mention the traditional safe way to travel around it. So, quick round of applause for Divi and the city. All right, most insightful category. Uh, this category recognizes the entries that reveal the most, uh, the most or provide the most intelligent, surprising learnings from the trip data. While some of the most beautiful and creative approaches don't necessarily dive deeply into that data, the finalists in this category all found nuggets of uh, insight into that data, whether it was uh, time saving, writing, dimming, the impact of the time limits on ridership, or how weather affects the rides. So, without further ado, the first finalist is Sean Jacobson. Um, Sean built an application that looks at which mode is faster, Divi or public transport. Sean's currently a student at planning, but he absolutely loves Divi, uh, so much so that he submitted two entries last year and enjoys finding ways to visually interpret the data. Round of applause for Sean. Isaac Lambert, uh, who compared long rides versus uh, short rides, or as we say in my family, brief rides. And analyzed the number of members uh, or 24 hour pass users are taking those rides. He comes from the Midwest, uh, and with his mathematical background, he's made the transition into the world of data. Now in Silicon Valley, Isaac leverages the massive amounts of data to help make actionable business recommendations. Round of applause for Isaac. All right, the third finalist is John Savage, who conducted an exploration of the effect of weather and uh, the effect that that has on ridership patterns in Chicago last year. Like most of us in the room, John's a computational chemistry PhD student from Ireland, <laughs> who will be graduating from the University of Chicago this summer. Let's give it up for John. <laughs> and the winner is the computational chemistry PhD student from Ireland, John All this stuff, I have mob programming downstairs, so it is a uh, great night for everyone to come and thank them as well. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. All right, for the final category for the best overall visualization, uh, we get to most comprehensive, and we will re invite Sean Wydell back to the stage to present that award. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Um, so I, I guess I have to say my station. My station doesn't exist right now. It makes me sad. But it will be there in a couple months. So I'm excited about that. Um, but it'll be uh, at Banner and uh, during the Brown Line. So. Uh, the most comprehensive category recognizes the entry that displays and shares the data most fully while still being easy to understand. The entries in this category are all analyze the data <coughs> excuse me, from a range of perspectives and slice and dice the data in a variety of different ways. So the first finalist <coughs> excuse me, is uh, Scott Preston, uh, who examined Divi's role as a mass transit system. Scott is a certified professional transportation planner with experience working on a wide variety of transportation infrastructure projects throughout the Midwest, 
ranging from multi-county freeway corridor planning to neighborhood level complete streets initiatives. He currently works in the performance management department of the Chicago Transit Authority. The second finalist is Abhinav Singh, who took a comparative look at trip trends and usage over time. Abhinav is a data visualization consultant at Slalom, um, Slalom Consulting, and he has over six years of experience in the data discovery, in data discovery, and loves to experiment with new technologies. And the third finalists are Sean Reynolds and Daniel Wynn, who took a graphic year in review of Divi in 2014. Sean is an information management, analytics, and data visualization consultant with Slalom Consultant Consulting, and Daniel is a consultant with Slalom. And the winner is Abhinav Singh. Congratulations. But, um, this is surprising because I used PowerPoint to present that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, <laughs> but it, it was fun. Uh, this was a very fun project to go out. Uh, I used two years, uh, 19 months of data, and uh, I used five different technologies to come. Put it together so, and then PowerPoint was the one that I can bring everything to that. So it was great, and thanks so much. All right, the final award is the best overall visualization, which goes to the entry that has the best overall aesthetics, provides insight, creatively illustrates the data, and is easy to understand. So it captures a lot. In essence, this is the visualization that captures the whole range of what we're looking for in terms of beauty, creativity, insight, and comfort.